So what's up? So we're back again, another night of cooking. Tonight what we have on the menu is burgers. My wife asked me for burgers and I'm like, well, we don't have no hamburger buns. And she'll like, we'll go to the store and get some. I ain't really feel like it. She kind of dared me to make some buns. I had made some before they came out all right. So this is gonna be my second time around. So we're gonna actually do some hamburger buns with the burgers. So I'll have to go ahead and get the buns done now. So first what I have here is three and a half cups of flour. This is actually bread flour, but you could use whatever type of flour that you prefer. I have a reserve half a cup over here to the back. I have four tablespoons of butter. I have one large egg, I have a cup and a half of milk. This is really the only thing that we use milk for. Um, we typically stay away from milk. We don't like milk. We don't like what's in milk, but this does actually help out tremendously with the um, moisture in the um, bread. I also have a tablespoon of yeast. I'll go ahead and put that in. I also have two tablespoons of sugar. I'm gonna add that to the yeast. The sugar actually helps the yeast um, come to life pretty much. We're gonna add the milk to that once we warm it up. The milk should be pretty much lukewarm, uh, room temp. That's out the fridge, so I'm about to warm it up the natural way. I wouldn't recommend doing it in microwave. Um, also back to the ingredients, I have the teaspoon of salt. And this is optional. I just put this in here for a little flavoring for my wife and I. That is a teaspoon of garlic salt. So I'm gonna just go ahead and wait for this to warm up again for a little bit. Then I'm gonna add it to the yeast and give it about five minutes. Usually what happens is it'll foam up at the top of it and that's how you know that it's activated. And from there, you know that it'll rise. The yeast can go bad. I would recommend proofing it. Um, that's pretty much what this is called. If you know your yeast is good, then you're good to go. But I like to proof mine just to be on the safe side. I don't wanna wait for bread to rise and it never rise and I just wasted all that time. So once this warms up and I let the yeast activate, I'll show y'all how that look and then we'll go ahead to getting this blended. All right, I actually think it's about warm enough. This is how I actually tell. I take my little pinky and I kind of put, dip the little knuckle in it just to see if it's a little warm. Once it's about lukewarm, room temp, I think that's uh, good enough. Go ahead and mix it. Give it a little spin. I'm gonna go ahead and add my dry ingredients, which is pretty much just the garlic salt the regular salt and get that combined really well while I wait for my yeast to activate. And if y'all can't tell by now I'm left-handed but what I can't seem to figure out is seems like all the forks and all the knives are for right-hand people and I can't seem to eat right with them but I make do, it is what it is, but if y'all know anybody out there that sells left hand forks and spoons, I'd love to know because growing up, being left handed has been a challenge. Thank y'all, appreciate that. We actually gonna see if we could get this in real action. What you should see is them, it actually look kind of freaky. You'll see them start to like bubble and kind of like expand. Gotta be patient. That's always give it up to five minutes. I think it's been about three, four. Just in this little process of doing this thing. And if y'all could tell, y'all should be able to see that it's foamed up a little bit at the top. So it shows that the yeast did activate. So we should be perfectly fine with it rising. So from here, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is um, this egg, give it a little whisk, add the egg to it. Go ahead and add the butter. Get them a little mixed up. Go ahead and 
add the dough hook. I'm gonna go ahead and add majority of my, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and add it all. Now this is the flour mixture, not the reserve flour. This is just in case we need to add some. Now it may vary depending on where you are. Um, if you live in the south or if you live up north, um, typically the climate can determine how much flour that you need to use. So it could be anywhere between three and a half and four cups. Usually up north, it seems like the flour is a little bit more dry. You may need to add a little bit more versus down south where it's a little bit more humid and moisture. So you don't, you know, need to add the full four, four cups. And I could look at this right now and tell that it needs some more flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. Go ahead and Now you will have to let this rise for about a good hour. What you want it to do is pretty much double in size. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more. Y'all can kind of see that elasticity getting down. That should be enough flour. Once I combine this, I'm gonna crank it up to medium for about three to four minutes and check on the texture to see if it's where I need it to be. And then from there, I'm gonna get a bowl buttered and covered, and I'm gonna store it in a warm place to allow it to rise for about an hour or until it doubles in size. So I think the dough is about where I need it to be. I have the bowl buttered. What you're really looking for is a little sticky texture, but not enough to stick to your hands. And also some if, uh, if less, if, if elasticity, if elasticity, however you say that damn word, you know, elastic, but with the icity at the end. So that, that right there is what I'm talking about. I could show you better than I could tell you. And then what you want to do is get it into a nice little ball. See how it has a little sticky, but it's not leaving my hands like it could like stick to each other. Like that. See that? That's what I'm talking about right there. What you want to do is get it into a nice little ball. Like so. Mmm. And what you wanted to do, get a good look at that. You want it to double, size, double in size. So by the time we come back to check on it, it's going to pretty much going to be covering the bowl. I do have a bigger one, but I'll leave it in that one since it's already buttered. Um, see in about an hour once it doubles. See ya. Bye. All right, so now it's time to go ahead and make the buns. So I don't know if y'all caught that, but it did a little um, deflating. That's from it being in the um, in a little humid area and it's kind of cooler up in here. So once that cold air hit it, it went ahead and started deflating. But we have to let the air out anyway. So all it did was beat us to the punch. So. going to start dividing it into usually this makes about for us about depending on the size that we want them about 15 buns sometimes we do hamburgers sometimes we do hot dog buns Keep in 
mind it's a little misleading because they're going to go through another rising process so they will end up bigger than how they look once we put it on a um on a tray but what i do is i go ahead and i form these into little balls like so <music> This has about a week and a half um, shelf life. Um, I don't know how you all store it. We don't specially store it or anything, but we notice that it starts to get moldy, you know, probably around the two week mark. So to be on the safe side, you know, we say a week and a half. So I get them to a circle and then with the palm of my hands, I give it a little push. And depending on the size that you want it to be, keep in mind they're gonna get bigger and they don't have to be perfect, but they will rise. So believe it or not, this is gonna make a decent size hamburger bun and you'll see. Now these things are, you know, you can use this for multi purposes. We're actually gonna eat burgers tonight with them, but we eat sandwich. We'll get like sandwich meat from the deli. We'll eat sandwich on them. We'll eat an egg sandwich on them. Um, so they're pretty versatile, but keep in mind if you choose to put something extra like garlic powder, then you may not wanna eat them like on a peanut butter jelly or just like a jelly sandwich or something like that. So y'all pretty much get the picture. Once I make all of the buns, I'll give y'all a final shot with them on the pan. Also, the pans are buttered as well. I'm gonna place some more saran wrap on them and then I'm gonna let them rise for about, for about 30 to 45 minutes. It just all depends on what size you want them. Just keep in mind, they're gonna do a little rising in the oven when you bake them. butter the top of them. From here you saran wrap them, put them to the side 30-45 minutes to your desire, you know, height. Just buzz, they are completed like a built. Set this one over here to cool off. So as soon as I pull them out, I go ahead and hit them with butter. Now you'll see the different looks in them and that's because the pans are different. I have to get another one because I actually like this pan, but this one is a little bit thicker so the cook on them is slightly different. That's why they're a little different in color. Ain't no sweat, they both done. A little ashy right now. I'm about to fix that. Oh, I'm about to fix that. Don't y'all worry. Now, prior to baking them, if you happen to be a fan of, you know, poppy seeds or sesame seeds or something like that feel free to do a little egg wash prior to putting them in the oven 
and go ahead and do a little egg wash on them drop the seeds on there and then bake them on 375 for 15 to 20 minutes i recommend checking it at 15 minutes because again depending on how thick the pan is it may bake a little quicker after buttering them put a clean i stress a clean towel on them that way it can retain all the heat and moisture um, all of that heat won't get drawn out of the uh, out of the buns. It'll pretty much hit that tile and stay focused there. Keep its moisture, keep it nice and soft, and then we put those suckers in some Ziploc bags. So we're gonna jump right over here, and we about to go ahead and get these burgers ready. Making sure we have everything out that we need prior to getting started. The last thing you wanted to do is get started and realize you don't have everything you need. And what I like to do with my onions is actually saute them a little bit. So... I stick them in a little pan right here. Right now, all I have is butter, but I'm about to show y'all everything else that I add to it. A little bit of this, um, uh, this sauce again. A little dibble dabble on it real quick. Great on everything. They ain't lying. He ain't. He did his thing when he came up with this. I ain't even gonna lie. I'm oh, gonna add a little bit of water as well. But the water's going to evaporate, liquid's going to evaporate. If it does, you can always add more. And I like to get it rolling first, and then I actually turn it down to like low and kind of let it simmer and soften the onions up for me. All right, so now what we're about to do is go ahead and season up the ground beef. So for those of you out there who may have, um, you know, burgers, you know, hamburger meat or hot dogs or sausages or something and you ran out of bread or buns or whatnot, if you have some flour, honestly, flour, egg, salt, and yeast is important, um, go ahead and make yourself your own little buns. Then you have some left over.
your Japan nice and hot. Now this is 100% optional. We like to add a little bit of flavor, extra flavor to our bun. So what we do is melt a little bit of butter and a little bit of garlic. You can't tell we be huge fans. And a little bit of seasoning. y'all get a good look at that bun right there. Look at that. Look at that. That's, that's homemade right there. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Huh? Everything is just about wrapping up. Y'all look at that, look at that, look at that. That's, that's, that's homemade right there. So this is for the taste tester. Very picky dude, very, very picky dude. Sent me um, his toppings. And finally, bam. I think that's all he requested. If you stuck with the video, thank you very much for watching. I've created yet another masterpiece, as you can tell. Um, again, this was homemade hamburger buns from scratch, and then also, you know, burger with my little twist on it. I'm going to go ahead and pull out my taste tester to see what he thinks about this dish. I think this one will actually, you know, knock him off his socks. Come on, man. Back at it, huh? I see y'all at it every day. Oh, man. Yeah, so uh, the buns, all me. You know, the burger, I don't know who killed the cow, but I seasoned it. But the buns, all me. You know, I went okay. ahead and made this thing up nice, okay. just the way that you requested with all of the toppings. You're a pretty picky you look dude. Good. I um, give you that no presentation. Peppers, but that. Go ahead, I hope Let's you see enjoy. Mmm. Mm. Need I need, need I say more? Seriously, need I say more? Speechless. <laughs>